Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Stout. I am a teaching and learning librarian at Cabell. Um, oh, and this is Toffee. She's, as soon as I started talking, she wanted attention. Um, and Hannah. and I'm Hannah Franz. I'm the director of the Focus Inquiry Learning Lounge, and uh, um, I also teach in the Focus Inquiry Department. So we're doing a series of videos um, to answer commonly asked questions that students in 111, 112, and 200 have. Um, we're breaking it into four parts so that you can just watch whatever video has the question that it interests you. Um, and there's going to be an outline with all the questions um, as well. Uh, so this first one is about research topics and keyword development. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. So here is our list of questions, um, and you can see this first one is about research topics and keywords, and I have some links here that I'm going to click on, but all of these videos will be sent out with this outline, so you'll have access to these links as well. But before I get started with all that, I do want to click on my staff page um, from VCU Libraries because it has my email address on it, jastout at vcu.edu. All of the questions I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to give like relatively quick answers to. This isn't meant to be, you know, a 30 to 40 minute class. Um, so if there are any additional questions that you have, or if you have any follow up questions to anything we talk about today, please email me and I will answer your question. So um, the first couple questions, and just so you know, these questions were compiled from actual students in classes. Um, that I taught where they sent me these questions ahead of time to talk about and then also uh, the peer mentors in the fill also contributed a few questions as well. So um, when it comes to research topics, the two most common questions are, you know, how to make a research question either more specific or how to broaden it out. So those are the first two questions on the list here. And for both of those, we can go to the develop research topics guide, which is um, in on VCU Libraries website. Um, this is a really great guide for getting started with research and on the side here it has these sub pages including this one narrowing and broadening your focus. So this is really awesome because it gives actual examples of research questions and in the first one is your topic too big ways to narrow them and then I'm going to scroll in just a second ways to broaden them out. So um, you know, this first example here, uh, so like let's say your research question is how are women represented in the movies? Um, changing that to something like how is female sexuality represented in horror movies? That kind of hints at what basically you can do, which is to take your topics and think about how, like what is, what is a more specific aspect of my question? So instead of movies, horror movies, right? That's a genre of film. Um, and the next one is another good example. Is technology negatively affecting high school students? Changing that to is the ubiquity of smartphones making it difficult for high school students to concentrate in the classroom. So if you feel like your topic is too broad, think about what are some of the words or concepts in your topic like technology, culture, gender, and what are some ways you can get even more narrow into those topics? Um, how can you kind of like zoom in on the topic? Another thing you can do is just dive right into your research and just kind of pay attention to the titles of articles and books that come up because that might inspire you um, to narrow down your topic. If you have any experience looking at scholarly articles, you probably know that they tend to be really specific. Like it's really rare for a scholarly 10 page article to be like gender roles in America. That's usually like a book, right? So if you are just like kind of like just uh, looking at some titles that interest you of scholarly articles, you'll probably be inspired to narrow your topic a little bit. So if we scroll down to the next section, what happens if your topic is too small? So this first example here, how does the television show Rick and Morty explore dysfunctional father-son relationships, changing that to how are father-son relationships represented in animated television shows? Um, you can kind of see it's the reverse of what we just talked about. So instead of like picking a really specific movie or television show, um, kind of pulling back and looking at TV and movies in general. And I see students who run into this issue when they are really passionate about something. So they're really passionate about a movie or a TV show or 
a video game or, you know, something really specific that's almost too specific. And so, yeah, just instead of narrowing in, broadening back out, pulling back and looking at the bigger picture and how to explore a topic instead of looking at one little tiny aspect of culture, pulling back to look at a bigger aspect of culture. Um, so let me pause there for a second. Hannah, do you have anything you want to add so far? Yeah, so one thing that I like to tell my students when they have, when they're very passionate about a topic that's so narrow that they can't find sources on, so let's take the example here um, <clears throat> about Rick and Morty. If they're expanding out to look at father-son relationships in animated television shows from the past two decades, they can still talk about the show they want to talk about, but do it in the frame of what has already been done research-wise. Yes on other TV shows, right? And then they can apply that back to their particular interest, which is where the analysis comes in, the synthesis comes in, and it's also where their original contribution to the research comes in. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's always good to try to keep that interest and that passion in there um, because it's, it's not easy to do research and it's even more difficult when it's a topic that you're just like, I don't even care about this topic at all. Mm -hmm. So if there is a topic that you care about and you can make it work, that's, it'll make it a lot less painful to do the research. So we try to, at least I um, try to encourage students to find a topic they're interested in, even if they have to broaden it out or narrow it down, like you can still explore something that's interesting to you. Um, so going back to the commonly asked questions, so those kind, that kind of answers the first two. Um, then the next two are about keywords. The first one is, how do I find the best keywords? And the next one after that is, how do I rule out certain keywords? So how do I find the best keywords? Now, obviously, that depends on your topic, because whatever your topic is, is going to lead to whatever keywords you use. Um, I do have a couple websites here. Uh, Thesaurus.com, probably most folks are already familiar with. I really like this one, Word Hippo. I feel like it goes a little above and beyond thesaurus. Um, it does have ads on the side, and that's a little annoying. But um, if you type in a word, so like let's say I type in creative, it's going to find uh, synonyms for creative that you would, you know, think of, you would automatically think of, like imaginative, innovative. Um, but it also has like some slightly stranger ones, like blue sky, avant garde unorthodox. So this is just a very easy place to go to find synonyms uh, for your keywords. Now, the other part of thinking about keywords are thinking about concepts, ideas, people, places, things that relate to your topic. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to do background reading. Um, so for example, in another class, uh, I use the example of the uh, birth control movement at the turn of the 20th century as my sort of sample topic that I used in the class. And if I were a student doing that topic, I might start by doing something like going to the page about birth control on Wikipedia. And this is gonna be a really long Wikipedia page because this is a big, big, big topic. But if we scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see here that there has early history birth control movement. And if we go here, this is sort of what I was talking about. So you might start seeing things like Margaret Sanger, who is who was an early birth control advocate. You might see something like Comstock Law, which is a law that was put into place to prohibit sending birth control and birth control information through the mail. So these are keywords that relate specifically to your topic at hand. And the only way to know what those terms are is to read about the topic. This is why starting with Wikipedia is usually not a bad thing, especially if you're really new to a topic and you know very little about it, because it will give you a place to begin before you go to the scholarly articles. And that's like diving into the deep end, right? This is like the baby pool where you're just getting your feet wet. So this is a good place to go to find keywords. Um, and then as you're researching and finding articles, just paying attention to words, ideas, things that come up that um, relate to your topic that you can plug right back in and do a little more research on. Okay. Um, the other question was, how do I rule out certain keywords? And there's actually a very straightforward way to do this in the VCU library search and also in databases. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. So if we go to the VCU libraries, 
you probably, hopefully you guys are familiar with the gold box. This is where you would search for articles and books and all kinds of things. You can actually go to this thing that says advanced. And what this does is it lets you, well, it, it lets you do a lot of things. Like it lets you search like for an author or for like in a particular material type, a particular year. But it also gives you this option for using and, or, and not when you search. So I'm going to demonstrate what this looks like. Um, and I'm just going to do a really easy search. I'm going to start my search dogs and cats. And we're going to pay attention to how many articles come up or how many um, resources come up when I search for that. So we searched for dogs and cats. And now I'm going to scroll a little bit. And you'll see that we have about 200,000 results for dogs and cats. Now let's go ahead and change it to dogs or cats. We went from 200,000 results to 1.5 million results, right? So if we're thinking about like a Venn diagram, uh, dogs and cats is like that little section in the middle that's searching for, there's dogs, there's cats, dogs and cats is that little sliver in the middle. But if we do dogs or cats, it's like two whole, it's like both parts of the Venn diagram, right? It's anything that has dogs or cats or dogs and cats. So that's why there's so, so, so many more, right? Um, and then to get to the question about how to rule keywords out, that's where not comes into play. So let's say you say, I want um, everything with dogs, but I don't want anything with cats. Do the search. And then if we scroll down, we're going to find a little bit under a million results or a little, yes, a, yeah, I can't do numbers, a little under a million results. So we have more than the first search and less than the second search, but clearly it's making a difference in how many results we find. So that's how you can take a concept and then remove something else from it. So ruling a keyword. Another example might be like if you were doing research on stars, as in stars in the sky, but we know that the term celebrity or celebrities is a synonym for stars. So you could do something like stars, not celebrities. Um, and another way to do this is to simply add more keywords to your search. So uh, in another class I was teaching, I was uh, using eviction as my sample. So I was typing in and I noticed that there were a bunch of articles coming up that were about like medical stuff. So it was like eviction of nucleopeptides from plasma or, you know, something like that. And I was like, well, that's obviously not what I'm interested in. So I changed the search to eviction and affordable housing. And then that made all of that medical stuff go away and all the stuff in terms of like eviction in terms of like um, getting kicked out of your house came up. So that's another thing. If you're finding that you're doing a search and stuff that does not is that is using your keywords but isn't actually relevant to your topic comes up, just adding additional keywords to kind of focus in is probably going to help you a lot. Okay, and so those are all of our questions for this video. Um, Hannah, do you have anything else that you want to add before we end the video? No, I don't think so. I think that covers it, Jenny. Cool, and just uh, just a reminder, um, you can always contact me at jastout at vcu.edu, um, and I am excited and happy to take your questions.